for fun Or you like desperate dance If you're a bit of a cook Or you like a good book, don't delay To have your say yes, yes, do it right, right away. away Right away, right away yes, yes, do it right, right away. away Give your mates a scare Tell them you really care Have you had a good day? Wanna have your say Don't delay to Right away, yes, do it right away Right away, yeah. Do it right, right away. Right away. Oh, Mousy, Mousy, I'm receiving a signal. Oh, oh, this is confidential stuff, Larry. Really? Yes. It looks like the girl who wants our help is writing a diary. Oh, do you think she wants us to read it, Mousy? Well. I'm not sure, but if she does, remember our motto. If, if you're, you're keeping, keeping a diary every day, full of fun, friends and play, whatever, whatever you write, whatever, whatever you say, we'll always keep it hidden away. <laughs> Hello, my name's Daniela and I love gymnastics and reading. Ooh, what are you doing, Daniela? I'm going to write my new diary. Brilliant. Did you have a good day? Really excellent. Monday the 30th. On Monday morning, I woke up and got out of bed. Then I went downstairs and had some cornflakes and milk. After that, Rachel came to call for me. What's happening? I've run out of space! Oh, don't give up! Tuesday the 1st. 0730, got up. 0800, ate cornflakes. 0830, left house. 0900 school 1000 violin lesson fifteen thirty home time twenty hundred bed Daniela that's not very interesting I know Wednesday the second On Wednesdays, Daniela has loads of different activities. Let's hope she remembers to write about them in her diary. And stretch those arms and round and round and stretch those arms and round and round. Thursday the 3rd. Hi, how's it going? I can't remember what I did. Oh dear. I think Daniela needs our help. Writing rescuers to the rescue. Jacqueline Wilson writes brilliant children's books and she's writing a diary about her favourite places in London. So I asked her if Daniela could come along for the ride. Aha, uh -huh, I see you're catching your diary. So how are you getting on writing your diary? Do you like writing a diary? Yeah, but um, well, I'm finding it quite hard to get ideas and write it, so it's interesting. I know it, it can be quite difficult. I'm doing this special diary thing for this magazine where I have to go all over London pointing out all the bits that I like. Sometimes it helps to sort of loosen things up a bit. If you think about your diary as if it's a special friend. Have you ever heard of a girl called Anne Frank that kept a diary when she was a teenager during the war? Do you know what she called her diary? She called it Kitty. 
I don't want to jot down the facts in this diary the way most people would do, but I want the diary to be my friend, and I'm going to call this friend Kitty. My daughter's got this silly nickname, Funnel, and I rather like rabbits, and I've got this special little rabbit mascot. I thought I might start off Dear Bunny. Do you think that sounds OK? Do you yeah. think it sounds dark? Yeah, I think it sounds good. So you could make, give your diary a name. What would you call your diary? Got any ideas? Um, I think I'd call it Gabriella. Daniela? Gabriella? Hmm. Mousy? Housey! Yes! I'm going to call my diary Housey! What are you doing, Mousey? I'm writing my diary entry. Dear Housey. Diaries don't have names. Oh, where's your imagination? I've made her up because it's easier to pretend I'm writing to another mouse. And Housey is the maddest mousey mate a mouse like me could ever dream of. Oh. It's exciting to feel that, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of people will be coming to this particular spot just to see it. And we're here first. Yeah. Now we'll come back when it's finished, won't we? Let's go and yeah. find somewhere else now, eh? The thing about writing diaries is that you can't put absolutely everything in. Otherwise you'd be writing all the day, putting in all the little tiny big details. So if I was to ask you to describe your river trip, you wouldn't do it all, would you? You'd just sort of peer out, and then when there was one particular thing that suddenly looked interesting, you'd write about that. You can see that funny little building there. I mean, I wonder why that is stuck all by itself. Do you, do you think somebody lives in there? Everything I do is so interesting, it's very difficult to choose just one thing to write about in my diary. But here goes. Dear Housey, the most wonderful thing happened after lunch today. Larry was taking a nap, but I was still feeling quite peckish. Suddenly, there was a knock at the door, and there he was, my marvellous cheese delivery man with my favourite mega pie cheddar. Oh, I only wish I could share some with you, Housey. My what? What? What's that? Uh, nothing. Nothing at all, Larry. It's my favourite street in all of London. Do you know I didn't want Larry to read my diary because it's private. My diary is the one place where I can be totally honest about what I think and feel. That's the thing. If you decide to write about a book in your diary, what you could do, you could actually say what you really truly think about it. It's not kind of like to impress the teachers or whatever. It's, you know, whatever you feel. So that if you feel it's totally boring, doesn't matter. You can say that because it's your private diary and absolutely nobody else can read it but you. Look, it's a nice children's book. Larry, what would you write about me in your diary? Um, Mousy is my friend. She likes to eat cheese and is very beautiful. Oh, that's nice. What would you write about me, Mousy? Hmm, Larry is my friend. Mm. He's very kind, mm. but sometimes he's a bit dozy and needs looking after. But, Mousy, you wouldn't really write that, would you? Is that what you really think? It might be. Oh. Right, let's have a look at the books, eh? Ah, uh, a particular author that seems familiar. Now, that was the one that you said you wanted, wasn't it? Right, any others you want? That one? That one. That one. Oh, hurry up buying your books, Jacqueline. We want to hear your diary. Come on, let's go and pay for them. Here you are then, Mousy. Dear Bunny, I decided to start my day out in London on a river trip along the Thames from Greenwich. I met this seriously cool little girl, Daniela, on the boat. She's trying to write a diary. So am I. We swooped down the river 
and saw some very modern tall towers and some really old ones. The Millennium Dome is like a vast spider from space. Daniela and I want to see what's inside. I lost count of the number of bridges we went under. There was one strange lonely house all by itself. Does anyone live there? It's fun travelling around London on the river. When we got off the boat, we made straight for my favourite old bookshops. Daniela really made my day and said that I was her favourite author. I felt really proud and bought her a huge pile of my books as a thank you. I felt sad saying goodbye to Daniela. She was a great travel companion and made the day much more fun. That one's done. Now we'll have double act. Right, we'll sign that one for you. Right, the diary. We have to put a special message here and wish you luck actually seeing if you can manage to keep it. 365 days. Oh, there's one left. Do you think it would be a good idea if we gave this one to Mousy? <gasps> Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mousy, this one's for you. Oh, thanks. I hope she likes it. Okay then, my puppet, pick up your books. Let's go and find your mum. Right, lovely. Right, off we go. Daniela, is that your diary? Yes, it's private. Oh, can't I hear a little bit? Oh, all right. I suppose you could read this page. Oh, thank you. I woke up feeling good today because My it's the weekend. Said that you are it. My friends, Billy, Sadie, Bonte, and Rachel. I really like playing sticky toffee with them. Tinky likes it too. Oh dear. <laughs> they're good friends because they're fun and interested in everything. Brilliant. After lunch, I went to see Dad play cricket. He scored some fantastic yeah. runs. Then he caught out the other side's best player. It was excellent. Afterwards, we played on the seesaw slide and swings. Dad's really crazy and we had loads of fun. Sunday, it's gymnastics today. Yay! I enjoy vaulting the most because it really challenges you. Isabel took us for warm-up. She's brilliant. Hello. It's our last practice before the London Youth Games. I'm really nervous about it because I don't want to let the team down. Good night, Gabriella. Wasn't Daniela's diary brilliant, Larry? Yes, I wonder why. Well, to begin with, she gave her diary a name. And she didn't try to write about everything. She just chose the most interesting things. And she was totally honest. Wasn't it kind of her to read it to us? If only you would read me your diary, Mousy. Actually, it is rather interesting. Ooh. Um, ooh. But let's keep it to ourselves. Oh, OK. See you next week. And remember, we're, we're the, the Writing, writing Rescuers. Rescuers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tell your diary. I tried to listen to you once. Oh, oh, thank you, Mousy. They won't. Well, we Like a good book, don't delay. To have your say, yes, yes, do it right, right away. away. Right, right away, away yes, yes, do it right, right away. away. Give your mates a scare. Tell them you really care. Have you had a good day? Wanna have your say? Don't delay. Do it right away, yes, do it right away. Right away, yes, do it right away. Right away.
Perhaps you can't guess what writing challenge we've been set this week, Larry? No, Mousie. Well, today, Larry, we've got to write a letter. What sort of letter? A party invitation? <laughs> no, no, a persuasive letter. A letter where you try and get someone to agree with you. Where you persuade them that you know best. Something I'm rather good at, actually. That's lucky. It is, isn't it? Writing rescuers <gasps> to, to the, the rescue! rescue. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Rachel and I love horses. Rachel first fell in love with horses when she was three years old and went on a donkey ride. Keep up, Rachel! Rachel doesn't have her own horse, but her friend Lorna does. Lorna's horse is called Trigger. Poor old Trigger has hurt his leg and needs to retire. And he damaged his tendon during jumping. Yeah. Mm, very common injury. So he's going to a rest home for horses. Come on then. To your new home. Rachel's Bye. going along too. Bye. Have a safe journey, Trigger. Bye. There's a new boy in town. Oh yes, over here. He looks really nice. <laughs> Rachel asked if she could meet some of the other horses. Okay, Rachel, the first one we see, this is Arab William, and he, he was ill-treated. The people that owned him never fed him. Really? Yeah. <gasps> That's terrible, isn't it, Rachel? Isn't it, Mousy? It's not very nice. And he was very, very frightened of people too. He used to run away from people all the time and it wouldn't come to the front of his stable and now look at him. Absolutely adores people now, especially children. Oh dear, so some people don't treat their horses very well. Oh, poor thing. Oh, I wonder what Rachel thinks about it. How did you get on with Trigger today, Rachel? Fine. And I learnt something else today, Mummy. What was that then? Some horses are badly treated. Oh, really? Cool. Well, what do you think we could do about that then? I'm going to write a letter. A letter? Who to? To every horse owner in the country. That sounds like a great idea, Rachel. Rachel wants to write a letter to persuade people to look after their horses properly. And I know just the person to help her. Dick King Smith is really famous for writing hundreds of books about all sorts of different animals, especially one, Babe. I think it's time you wrote a book about me. Do you? Well, I'm sorry, Mousy dear, but I only write books about real mice, not computer mice. So, hard cheese. Oh, yes, please. Oh, oh, but first of all, it's time to help Rachel with her persuasive letter. Hop on, Rachel. And they're off. First stop, the library. Let's join forces to, to save, save our horses. <laughs> you know that I write lots of books about talking animals. I mean, there's one, for instance, that you might have heard of. Um, and in that book, I've got to persuade them that this pig could really be speaking. So if you're going to write a persuasive letter, who do you think it ought to come from? From the horse's point of view. From the horse's point of view, how right you are. Oh, what a jolly good idea. Write the letter as if it's from a horse. Well done. 
I hope you two are reading about mice, because mice are really interesting. Why don't you keep your little mouse shut? We're not talking about mice, we're talking about ponies. Now then, Rachel, this pony's going to write the letter. What's he called? He's a boy and he's called Merrylegs. Boy called Merrylegs? What colour is he? A bay pony. A bay pony called Merrylegs. Right. Now we've got to find out what he's going to say. So they've got to look at lots of different books which are full of facts. Yes, facts. Yeah, lots of facts about horses. For instance... Did you know that horses have got four legs? I think that horses... And they have manes and long tails. I think that horses... And horse... I bet you didn't know that they can't talk like we do. They have their own horse language, which sounds something like this. Nay! Nay! I think the horse facts in Rachel's books will be a little bit more advanced. Advanced? I don't think talking about how many legs a horse has is very relevant. Relevant? No. I think she'll need to find out what happens to horses who aren't looked after properly. Uh, yes, well, I was just about to go on to that. Hm. Yes, Mousy. Rachel's looking for every single book she can find about horses to help her with her letter. Well, I've got some facts. Yes, you think you have. Well, we can't use all the facts out of all those books, so what we've got to decide now is which bits we're going to use to put in your letter. Ooh! Rachel's got to choose which facts out of all these she thinks will be the most relevant to include in her letter. Now they've found out lots of information at the library, Dick King Smith is taking Rachel back to the horse rest home to meet some horses who have really suffered. I can't wait to meet Rachel. I know what you mean, nor can I. I've got loads to tell her. Oh, here she comes now. Here we have uh, Sorrel and her friend Garth. Garth, you gonna come and say hello? These two are really good friends and uh, horses being herd animals like to be together or have company so if you owned your own pony you'd have to make sure you'd go up and see it every day otherwise they'd get very very lonely. That's right, it's time to play in the field. <laughs> cool, here we are Garth, come and play with us. <laughs> this is Bambi and she has in the past suffered with bad laminitis and it actually um, comes from having too much food which makes her feet very very painful but you're okay now okay bye Bambi see you later bye 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 keep on taking those notes Rachel you're doing a great job and the problems you have with horses like Timber, with these big feathery legs, is in the winter when he's out in the fields and the fields get really muddy, these actually get soaking wet and clogged up with mud. And if not properly looked after, what will happen, they will end up with huge, great big sores where everything stays really damp. Can you come here and talk to me, please? Certainly. On my way. Hello, Timber. Hello, Mousie. Now that Rachel's finished finding out about horses, she needs to put her argument into good order. Why is that then, Mousie? Well, she can't just put the arguments down any old way. She needs to write them in the order that will have the most effect on her readers. Oh, yes. So it's back to the library to decide how to put Rachel's letter into order. There are three things that Rachel needs to think about. How to start her letter, how to build up her arguments, and how to finish it right. off. Now, how do you think you ought to begin your beginning? Something eye-catching. Something eye-catching will take the attention of the reader. And the middle? Something that wants the, wants the reader want to read on. Makes them want to keep going. And the end? Something good happening. Something good happening? Yes, why not? or something exciting, something special. 
dear horse owner. Great. I've just been bought and left in a field. My owner is a young girl who knows very little about horses. She hasn't even got me a stable. Oh, forgive me, I haven't introduced myself. I'm a bay pony with the name of Merry Legs. I'm nervous, lonely and frightened in this new place. My ancestors were very friendly and lived in herds. If I'm left alone, I'll be very sad. The winter is worse because if I stand too long in the mud, little scabs appear below my knee bone. If the scabs are left too long, they can get infected and I might become lame. There's one scary illness I know of in the summer, and that is laminitis. It's an illness that ponies get in their feet and it's very painful. If I eat too much grass, which means too much protein, then I'll certainly get it. Here comes my owner now. She's got a horse book in one hand and a bowl in the other. Yippee! I think I smell pony nuts. And she's bought me a stable. This isn't so bad after all. So if you're thinking of buying a horse, or if you've already got one, make sure you look after us properly. Love from Merry Legs. We asked the readers what they thought about Rachel's letter. Yes. <laughs> it was about a pony and being scared about winter and illnesses and things like that. It shows that um, when you have a horse, you must look after it every day and feed it and have a stable for it, really. It got the point through that you needed to look after your pony. You couldn't just like put it out in the field. I guess about it. I think too many people just assume that they can have a pony or a horse as a pet and they don't realise the responsibility and the actual work that's involved in looking after them properly. It would be nice if everybody, before they bought horses or got involved with horses, could read something like this just to persuade them that maybe it's not quite as easy to own or just look after a horse as they think it is. Looking after ponies is very important to me and I think Rachel highlighted that in the letter. It's not just about riding but it's the looking after them as well that's important. I think everyone should read Rachel's letter. <laughs> Rachel's letter is very persuasive, isn't it? Yes, and let's remember why it worked so well. First of all, a good piece of persuasive writing makes the reader see things from your point of view. Next, you need facts to back up your argument. Sometimes you get those facts from books, sometimes from real life. Yes. And Rachel's letter didn't just say, oh, be nice to horses, it told us why. And last of all, you need to put your argument into good order. The order that you think will have the most effect on your readers. See you next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs> now, Larry, I'm going to persuade you that I need a double helping of cheese this week because I've been working so hard. Well, you're going to have to find some pretty good reasons, Mousey. I've given you a pretty good reason. I've been working. Good.